<laughs> We're not trying to fix it. Let me get another drink. I'm trying... No, I went down the wrong throat tube. All right. All right. Let's start this thing up in three, two, one. Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies. We're Nerdist New Bully. I'm your host, Leroy, a.k.a. Stay Your Black Ass at Home uh, with my co-host. This is Eli, the the violator. <laughs> <laughs> it's a repeat, but that's okay because that's what this show is going to be. Uh, so yeah, nothing's been happening this week, huh, Eli? Seems pretty. pretty uh, boring, yeah, yeah, yeah there ain't shit going on. No. Yeah, I, shit I, going. I've been I've been doing shit, but sitting around all day. That's what <laughs> I've been doing all week. That's what I've been doing all for the past two months because yeah. I've been injured with a bad leg and hip. So I can't do shit. So right. I'm used to this already. <laughs> right. So apparently for anybody that has been living on a rock, you know, hopefully this podcast is not the only source of entertainment or media you've been getting. Because if you step outside, it's basically apocalypse happening right now. You know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we we said last week that last week was going to be the last week we talking about the coronavirus. I guess we lied because everything just went to hell. And matter of fact, it went to hell Wednesday, Eli. I know exactly when it went to hell. It went to hell Wednesday. Everybody was like, yeah. okay, it's bad, it's bad. When's like, oh shit, because Wednesday is when Tom Hanks got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. When he got it, that's when everybody's, <laughs> oh, it's real. Oh, well, shit, anybody can get it now. You know, him and his wife got it. They got hospitalized, stuff like that. And that was bad, but that wasn't the worst part of it. An NBA player got it. Yeah. Yeah, so when an NBA player got it, they actually just suspended the entire NBA season for the rest of the season. And the NCAA finals, so there are no sports whatsoever. No, like and then and then all the other leagues followed, right? And it, you know, the hockey, like hockey, you know. Now, um, I mean, the Wild. I'm in Minnesota. The Wild sucked this year, so I guess I don't really care. But, the, <laughs> but <laughs> watching major, the major Wild league league, baseball pushed it back, you know. Major league baseball, yeah. I did watch the UFC yesterday, and they were in Brazil, and they fought in an empty stadium. Wow, it was kind. Of, <laughs> It was kind of weird. It was kind of weird at first, you know, because there's usually there's the crowd cheering and shit, and mm-hmm. but you know you could actually hear the cornermen. It was actually like watching that TV show, The Ultimate Fighter, when you could, you know, the fights on that show because you could hear the coaches and the cornermen, you right. know, giving pointers while the fight. So that was, you know, it just got something to, you know got got used to. But after when they had announced the winners, there was no cheering. There was nothing, you know. So it was, it was, it was, yeah, I, I, it was kind of surreal, you know? Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, a lot of times, you know, the, they feed off the energy from the crowd, you know, to keep going, things like that. When you don't yeah. have the energy, it's completely different, you know? It's almost like you just spawned. And a few, yeah, and a few fighters were doing that. They're all like, oh, you know, doing the Hulk Hogan shit, and yeah, mm-hmm. oh, getting all hyped and shit, and screaming, and. It's not the But there's, same. like, nobody there. You know, there's you nobody got, there. Yeah, you got Jimmy Fallon <laughs> doing monologues, his talk show with no crowd. So when he's telling a joke, you know, now nobody's laughing, and yeah. you used to be forced to laugh before. So yeah. it's just, but it's, it's, it's a this, weird time. This reminds me of right after 9-11. Ooh, you know. that was, yeah, so, I remember 9-11. That was, yeah, that was a weird, yeah. that was a definitely weird time. It's a real time, really. Yeah, I mean, remember all flights were grounded. They started canceling events there, too. People were freaking out. It was, it, the streets were empty for a few days after that. Um, yeah, it was a weird time. This is, a, this is what that, that's reminding me of. So, uh, right. yeah, because of course, got, I, was, I was working, well, I was saying, I was working you, at UPS at the time. Of 9-11. So I, I was like, yeah, during 9-11 and the whole anthrax scare, I was like working in like, you know, packages and <laughs> all that shit. <laughs> the worst time you worked at it. But people were freaking out, man. People were freaking out after 9-11, man. It was, uh, you know, it was kind of weird. Yeah. And that's that's what we're seeing now where people are, you know, panic. People are panicking over stupid. Sh- I mean, yes, you should be concerned. Right. You should take precautions. But don't be a fucking idiot. Don't buy Stop up all the toilet buying, paper. Don't buy up all the fucking bread. I couldn't find fucking bread today. Right. Oh, the three fucking stores. Why bread? Why fucking... bread? Why toilet paper? You know, yeah. like the toilet paper I, thing I, I just I, don't understand. Yeah, like yeah. What the fuck? What do, what do you? I mean, what are you gonna do with that shit? Like build a fort? Like right. the <laughs> like are we all gonna be dead? You know, two weeks from now, but our assholes gonna be clean as hell. Like what? what what's the point? You know. Yeah, like, I, what are you going to eat? Eli, you know, I won't like take a shit today. I couldn't because I couldn't get toilet paper. 
it, yeah, I'm I'm freaking out now because I bought to- there was toilet paper at the dollar store the other day, mm-hmm. you know, because I heard that Target didn't have any and all that shit. So uh, I went to the dollar store, you know, right down the street from me, and they had a bunch. They was oh hey, you guys got toilet paper, oh, cool. And I thought nothing of it, but now I'm like, well, when I need toilet paper next w- weekend. <laughs> you won't have it. Am I get it? Definitely get any. <laughs> right. It's gonna be Mad you know? Max. I mean, we didn't even picture the apocalypse in Mad Max to be fought over toilet paper. You know. Yeah. We thought actual stupid. supplies oh, like water. You know, things like that. Hand sanitizer, all that shit. But bread. I was at the store today. Bread was gone. Not even hot dog buns. I was trying to. I was gonna have hot dogs. Right. You know. <laughs> and now I can't have hot dogs. I can't make <laughs> PB and J. You know, <laughs> it's just weird. Like I try to answer, I try to ask people this question. They keep giving the same. Oh, because people are going to be, you know, quarantined and hunkered down, and you know they want to have all spot. I get that, but why is everything in stock except toilet paper? Like toilet paper's out, hand sanitizer out, but fruits and vegetables are still in stock. You know, they can build your immune system. Water is still was, in stock. So yeah, it was getting still a little barren. It's still getting barren at all these. I mean, a lot of shelves were like there was like no frozen shit. It's yeah. Aldi's was pretty bare yeah. today. Um, well, I, I didn't go I, in today, I, I, but I know the, the other day when I went in, it was like, what, what the fuck is happening? You know? Yeah, I was at, I yeah, the other day, I, I there was, yeah, there was no toilet paper. And, like, the medicines were all gone. You know, it was like, what the fuck? You're like, why are you buying up all the medicine? You know, you're only supposed to take two of those pills a day. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, every you know? every place has a, a place where you can't do more than 50 people at a, at a time in a, in one building. But you go to the grocery store yeah. and they're like the fucking, you know, a uh, 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 Beastie Boys concert or some shit. Like, damn, get your ass out of here. Go home or something. You know? Yeah. So, Canned goods are getting our... Yeah, there was no pasta or rice. You know, I was like, what the hell, man? Yeah, but <laughs> it's, it's getting crazy out there because a lot of people, a lot of jobs, if they can do it, they are sending people, you know, having them work from home. So a lot of people are doing that right yeah. now. Um, you know, they're trying to limit, you know, public. I am looking at Facebook. Anytime I see anybody in my Facebook stories of Facebook, you know, out partying and shit. Like recently, I'm like, okay, I know to stay away from that person just in case something happens. <laughs> uh, Gomer, yeah. your your city are a bunch of fucking idiots. Just want you to know that you were, <laughs> you were trending yesterday <laughs> because they had this huge block party in that downtown Nashville. <laughs> and everybody was just clowning okay. like, you fucking idiots. What, what are you doing? Go home. <laughs> Yeah, Gomer might yeah, even been I, there. I don't know. <laughs> Doing the two step or whatever. Right. <laughs> right. Is the that the Afro? Break? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I finally told my kid today because, like I said, well, no, I told you before in the in the the pre show. Oh, we have a pre show now. <laughs> we had a pre show. We were talking some shit and that no one else heard. But uh, but last week, um, my district, my the schools went on strike. So my kids have already been out of school for the past week, but now they canceled school next for the next next whatever, mm-hmm. and then the week after that is spring break. So my kids are like get like a three four week vacation now, <laughs> and my well, my son he's been going out gallivanting, thinking it's you know it's party time and shit. And I finally told him to like, hey yo, I went to the stores and shit. You know, you better start staying your ass here now. <laughs> right. It's going to be tough for People parents are... nowadays because it's just like down here also. Uh, kids were already on spring break down here. But the, when this hit, they extended it to who knows when. But the parents still yeah. have to go to work. So who the yeah. hell is going to watch the kids while they're at work? The yeah, whole point was to send them to school problem. so they had to worry about them while they're at work. But now the kids just do whatever the fuck they want to do, you know. And, yeah. and hopefully uh, – People are using this time not to go on vacations or, you know, take the kids here and there. No, stay at home. They quarantine. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Just sit at, yeah. I, like I said, I've, I've been injured. I had a, le- my, you know, I've injured my hip and my leg. I'm still in physical therapy for that shit. So I haven't been able to do shit for the past two months. So right. I'm already used to this. I've been, that's all I've been doing. <laughs> was sitting around you know so yeah Look, I'm, I'm, I've I'm been an introvert work by nature kid. anyway so this shit is like i was i was born for this <laughs> you know yeah everybody I mean, else yeah, is me freaking too. out I mean, like, what am i gonna do it, so just some movies yeah. or netflix for me like motherfucker i've been on xbox all fucking week i'm good you know <laughs> not to worry about anything <laughs> yeah yeah i've been reading books and catching up on comics and fucking yeah i mean shit i mean dc you universe i've just been <laughs> on this shit all week reading terrifics you know <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great fucking book, by the way. I, I recommend yeah. that one. Uh, so yeah, yeah this shit I'm, doesn't I'm, bother I'm me at all. This. Yeah, I, 
Yeah, I'm used to this shit. I mean, even I mean, I'm in a band and I go to shows and and even at shows, I got like a you know, I got like a three minute conversation window with everybody before I'm like, yeah, I don't give a shit anymore. I'm gonna walk away. <laughs> like you, know? you can feel your social meter <laughs> running down. You yeah. know. <laughs> hey, what's up? Yeah, hey, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. How's it going? Oh, yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Okay, I'm gonna walk away now. <laughs> <laughs> I got a thing to do over here. So yeah. Yeah, you know. There's a band playing. Don't stand too close to me because I don't, you know, I can barely hear you anyway. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, this shit is right in my alley, man. Like I said, I, I don't watch TV and movies like that anyway, but this shit is affecting us also because every TV show is getting shut down right now. Uh, the Batman yeah. has been shut down. Oh, uh, they shut yeah. down the Flash. They're in the middle of the, the last arc. Of the, I know you don't watch it, but I'm saying them, the last season arc is about to go. I want to know how Thong comes back in the Speed Force and blah blah blah. No, we're done. Like what? What? So I got no sports. Maybe I maybe I can catch up because I haven't watched the Flash in a couple. Of- well, they're not doing shit, so you might as well. <laughs> so the yeah. Flash has been shut down. Sports has been shut down. Now that's the shit that hurts me. I'm like, well, damn. Well, I guess I guess nothing to do but play video games because everything else is done. So, um, yeah. There is a sale on movies right now. I checked on iTunes. There is a sale right now. I bought Hobbs and Shaw and Joker earlier today. You know, they're like ten dollars a piece. So I'm like, why not? You know. But oh, no here, here's the thing. Uh, we're all gonna feel it a, a couple weeks from now. And I'm not just saying just you know health wise or you know virus wise, like financially wise or socially wise. It's going to affect all of us because, like I said, all our stuff comes from China. China is on lockdown because they don't want to, you know, get anything from us. So a lot of our, a lot of our supplies that we get, like electronic device, things like that are from China. You know, mm-hmm. the Apple stores all over the world are shut down right now. Till the 27th. Yeah. So and it's just going to get it's just going to get uh, just pile up and more and more. Uh, California, yeah. I think they shut down all restaurants, you know, unless you get yeah, take out. Think, yeah, I think New York is doing that too. I think New York's doing it too. And it's, it's going to get bigger and bigger. bars, yeah. Because you got dumb asses that, you know, stay in Gomer's town, you know, still partying and shit. Like, yeah. you know, the apocalypse isn't happening tomorrow. Or maybe they do know the apocalypse happening tomorrow and don't care, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Because, and the thing is, it's like, it's, we're not, and that's the thing, it's, 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 it's no reason to panic, but you have to take precautions. And the reason why, it's not, yes, you can, you, this, the virus, in the realm of things, the virus, the, it's not the worst virus. Yes, it can kill you. It can be deadly. It's basically contagious pneumonia. Pneumonia can be deadly to certain people. You know, pneumonia is not fun. Shit, didn't Bernie Mac die of pneumonia? Yeah. You know, he was like in his 50s and shit. So, you know, pneumonia isn't fun. And this is a contagious form of it. So it's, you don't, we don't need everybody to get it all at once. That's what they're trying to do. That's what this is all about. Right. You know, we want to, we want, you know, cause our shitty healthcare system can't handle like, a, like what's going on in Italy where their hospitals and they got an awesome healthcare system. Right. Their hospitals are full of patients. They're starting to let people, if you ain't, if you got, if you get a heart attack right now in Italy, well, that's it because they're, you're dead. Cause their hospitals are so full of, 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 of virus patients. Here's the thing. That, I just check that, Italy's that capacity. Numbers. Yeah, I just checked Italy's numbers today. The deaths alone for coronavirus just today were 368. Yeah. That's insane. I mean, the, at, at the pace their they're hospitals going, are just, yeah, they're just maxed out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Italy. They're going, they're going to, they're going to be more than China by probably next week. Yeah. And then you can say, oh, yeah, Italy is a smaller country. They're more confined. It's the size of California. It's a denser population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, that, that, they're, they're a modern country. Mm-hmm. And they're struggling, so we don't want that to happen here, where we're we everyone get. Yeah, we don't have Italy's healthcare, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, we don't want you know our hospitals maxed out with patients, where you know everybody's it's a, you know where they can't take care of everybody at you know with that that type of right mass. You get a gunshot you know? wound, you can't get help because fifty people in already got the yeah. coronavirus, you know. Yeah, or you, there's no space in the hospital left because everybody's, you know, got coronavirus in the hospital. And yeah, and you come in with a, a stroke, they're just going to tell you to take a fucking aspirin and go back. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> good luck, you know. <laughs> right. We don't want that. So that's why I stay the fuck home. So 
the virus spreads out over time and we will all eventually get it. Let's just not maybe, maybe some of us will get it in the winter time when, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and no, and yes, yes it's not, it, some, a lot of people are recovering, but some people aren't like, I don't want my dad to get it. My dad's an old man. I don't want him to get it. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, because so, right now so. I've looked at the world and I don't know how, how it is now. They seem like 3% death rate, stuff like that. But they said mm-hmm. the rate is going. They said because the United States is prepared for it. They said that 100 million people might get it. So if yeah. you even look at 1% of that, that's 1 million people. You know what they say yeah. within a 12 to 18 month period. And that's, that's on the low side. So we don't need it to hit us like that. So that's why we need to yeah. take a precaution because every, every state has been affected so far. At the beginning of the week. It hasn't been. We were laughing. Ah, Mississippi can't get a touch. Ah, y'all, 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 y'all. Like, I, I was laughing. I was like, yeah, black people can't get coronavirus. That's that's a fucking <laughs> lie. They shut the NBA yeah. down, so we know that's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jackson just I mean, got I'm, hit I'm, I'm, today, yeah. you know. Yeah, and my state's had it. I mean, it's been it's communicable now in my state, which means people who haven't traveled outside or have no idea how they got it, got it somehow, which right. means it's spreading. It's spreading throughout the city. And a million people... That's a city, right? <laughs> that's a, you know, think about that. That's that's a city dead. That's a dead city, right? You know? So, hey. yeah, I mean, it's it's just take precautions. Don't be a dick, you know. <laughs> that's, right. That's the thing. Don't, don't freak I, and, out. And here's the thing that's killing me: uh, the Bible thumpers. You know, uh, oh. you can't stop me. I don't know about Corona because I got Jesus. I'm like. You still yeah. can't go out there and do stupid I shit. I forget. You're in the South. I forget. I'm in the South. I, 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 you know what? Because I'm in the South, I just thought about something. People were saying that uh, don't, don't, don't shake hands. You know, don't fist bump. You know, do the Wakanda sign. You know, when you meet somebody. I'm like, yeah. I'm in Mississippi. <laughs> White people down here don't know what that is. <laughs> Goddamn shit is that you're doing to me. Like, they don't know what the... They didn't see Black... They don't even know what Black Panther is down here. <laughs> so, <laughs> we can't do that. Uh, but at the same time, yeah. Don't shake hands. Don't fist bump. Don't touch. Don't be a hugger. Unless you have big tits. Yeah. That's different. You know. But other than that, <laughs> just yeah. you know, be smart, you know. Uh but I was I'll, mo- I'll motorboat. I'll I'll motorboat, but you know, then I'll wash my face. <laughs> <laughs> we will risk it then all. I'll go this right. coronavirus is I'll wash it right. <laughs> <laughs> like there are some exceptions, you know. Like you know we're gonna quarantine. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> uh yeah, but like I said, Mississippi has been not here, we're still in the precaution. I'm pretty sure you're going to shut down the college down here, too, because, like I said, it was a college student that got affected. And if you get a, affected on a college campus, that shit could just run rampant, you know. So, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just watch. Look what happened to China. Just, yeah. They're starting. They're just now starting to come out of there, out of it, you right. know. And when did that shit start? In November? Yeah. You know, when, when did it start? November, December. So, that's what, three, four months ago? Right. So. Basically, that's where we're, we're that's where we're heading. You know, we're the next few months are going to be like this. Well, you got to just you got to take take it seriously. Stay home if you can. If you know, <laughs> quit fucking hogging up all the ass wipe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Also, I'm gonna start shitting on people's lawns. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Like who got all the toilet paper? I'm shitting on your lawn. <laughs> <laughs> like look at that license plate where they just got a whole bunch of toilet paper in there. Okay, I'm gonna follow yeah. you. Yeah, no shit. No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I hopefully we'll we'll be smart about this. I, I'm, but the thing is, I, I feel like we do need to be over precautious right now. We do because maybe we do need to be over precautious, but not do stupid shit like buy toilet paper. But if we over precautious and if nothing happens and we have a a low death rate when it's when it's all said and done. Then we can at least look back and say, were we over cautious? Maybe we were. But say if we don't take the precautions, and then it's just because yeah. of hand, then we're gonna look like, damn, we should we should have did what we were supposed that, to do. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was tell I was talking to people about this. I'm like, at least it's at least we're doing this for this virus, right? You know, at least this isn't Ebola, a, a massive outbreak of Ebola or smallpox or something deadly, right? You know, because if you get you get plague. You're fucked. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know, at least it's something not, like I said, in the realm of things, the coronavirus is not as bad as Ebola, where if you get it, you're, you know, yeah, they got a vaccine, but you got to get it in a certain amount of time. You get Ebola, you're, you're dead, you know, pretty much dead. The survival rate is very low, you know, right. <laughs> for everything. 
all age groups, you know, no, you don't want Ebola. So at least it's not that. And may, this is like a practice round for us. I would, I'm trying to think of it as like, yeah, this is a milder virus. Mm-hmm. It's, it's deadly. It is killing people. It's to be taken seriously, but at least it could be a lot worse. Like it could be like, you can't leave your house at all. Right. And you got, <laughs> it and could be we like, get on a martial law tanks running down the yeah. streets and stuff, you know? Like like yeah, Spain it could and Italy, be like, you know. Yeah, it could be like outbreak where you got to leave the fucking towel on the door and force quarantine in your house, and you know the military and fucking gas masks running up and down your streets, you know, ready to shoot you on sight if you. Right. <laughs> it, it, you know, you know, at least it's not that, you know. Right. And people, I know people are acting like that, but it's, it's not. <laughs> Oh man! Like I said, it's just been just a just a depressing week just for everything. Like you've been looking on TV, social media, you've been all around the world. It's just a thing. But like I said, this is supposed to be an upbeat, fun podcast. It's not CNN. It's this is not be. yeah. Remember we talk about <laughs> comics and bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're here for. That's what people want to tune in for. So now we're going to from here on out, we're going to lighten the mood. We're we're done with coronavirus for. For this episode, we're done with the apocalypse for this episode. We're just going to talk about just fun shit or as much fun as there could have been this week, you know. But let's get to the point. Uh, like I said, let's move on. Next part of the podcast is where we talk about the box office numbers. And Eli, I don't, you might get this one. I don't know. What was the number one movie of the week? I'm just going to throw it out there. Was it Bloodshot? It was not. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. Yeah. It was a Disney movie. Oh, so it was that, uh, what's it called? The Magic Movie. It's like the yeah, Magic Yeah, the Magic Pants Movie, Onward. The Pixar Onward, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Onward. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Onward was still number one. Uh, number two was I Still Believe. I think it's like a Christian movie or something. And oh, number geez, three. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And number three was Bloodshot. And so. Okay. Uh, should I start my review now or just, just go from there? We can talk about Bloodshot. I guess we can talk about Bloodshot. Okay. So let me look at my notes. So yes, uh, I, I, I did not see it. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to see it. Okay. Now, did you? Now, was there a reason why you didn't see? It? Like, were you, were you fearing for your life I, not to see it, or no? I mean, I, I my kid, like I said, my kid has been. You know, my kids have been out of school all week, and my older son has been out and about and hasn't been home, so I haven't had a sitter. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was get, thinking about seeing it tonight, you know, but okay. then I was. Tr- driving around trying to find bread <laughs> <laughs> right and i didn't get a chance to because i was like oh shit i'm gonna miss that movie trying to you know going to all these damn grocery stores trying to find bread so I, I just didn't get a chance to see it but i wanted to i mean i, I wanted to see i had planned on seeing it because amc you know to down the street here um they started like limited like limiting the capacity oh so, you know? so they, some, they're not gonna some let them shutting down yeah, well, they're starting. They started to uh, limit capacity, so it, you know they don't want people sitting next to each other or whatever. You know, the, you know, trying to limit contact with people, so they're not filling up the theaters. That's what they're starting to do. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, I was I wanted to see it this weekend because I was afraid. Yeah, it's going to be my only chance to see it before because that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. They're going to shut the theaters down, and I right. won't be able to see. You won't be see, able to see anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's my review. Every, uh, people have been asking, should they see it, should they not see it? We've seen the Rotten Tomatoes score on it. Like I said, it debuted at number three. You know, a Christian movie beat it, so that should tell you something. So my review of the movie. This is the best superhero movie of 2002, basically. Really? Yeah. 2002? Yes, 2002. <laughs> <laughs> like, the best way I can tell you about what, this you movie. 2020? Not 2020, no, of 2002. <laughs> It, like if, oh, like if this movie came oh, out in 2002, 2002 right 2002 yeah. if it came out in 2002 we would be losing that shit over this movie but now because yeah. the market's kind of oversaturated it's just like it's just another superhero movie now the now should you go see this movie should you not go see this movie i'll tell you this if you are a fan of vin diesel movies or you like vin diesel movies you will like this movie if you do not like vin diesel movies you will not like this movie because this is pretty much just triple x and what was that other one he did? It was another one. He, not Fast Fears, but it was, oh, the Riddick Fast movies. N- not those. Oh, yeah, the Riddick. The Riddick movies. It's, <laughs> it's like those movies. But if anything, this movie is more realistic than those movies are. 
because yes, Vin Diesel has superpowers in this movie, but at least in this movie they explain he has superpowers. He's doing the same shit in this movie than he is in the other movies. Triple X and and Riddick. Riddick's supposed to be like a regular ass dude just doing super shit, you know, for no reason. So Vin mm-hmm. Diesel's doing all this shit right here. Um, uh, like I said, you watch this movie, it's just it's. I want. I'll say one thing. The trailer fucked this movie. The trailer fucked this movie hard because the trailer oh, yeah. just gave away the plot. Like before okay. I even walked in, because they they told you the whole plot. If you haven't seen the trailer, I'm not gonna recite the trailer. But when I saw the trailer, I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa! You showing too much shit. So when the movie is in there and there is like a plot twist in there, you know where the movie throws your curveball. You like, well, I, since I saw the trailer, I've already know where this is going. So it kind of just fucked. So it did kind of you know uh change my opinion of the movie i feel like i might have had a a more entertaining time or a higher opinion of this movie if i didn't know where the plot was going but since they already told me ahead of time it's like eh, whatever some of the action scenes the first couple action scenes were kind of shoddy uh okay remember how we always talk about marvel where they got these sick unit guys that come in and do all the action shit Mm -hmm. okay so the second unit guy one of those second unit guys directed this movie oh okay yeah so and you can tell so, like I said, the, some of the action scenes were kind of, they spent a whole lot of money on on Vin Diesel's nano effects, and they had a lot of slow motion scenes in there, and they're actually like super tight, like those Christopher Nolan fight scene movies. I'm like, oh shit. But, the third act was actually pretty entertaining. The, the camera cut back some, you actually see the action, it was like really, really, you know, clear and concise. I was like, cool. Um, Vin Diesel was playing Vin Diesel. If you, I don't know what Bloodshot is like in the comic. Like I said, I've never read a Bloodshot comic before, and people are saying, "Oh, he's miscast." Or this or that. I don't know what it, if he's like Vin. Basically, Vin Diesel was just playing the same character he plays in every movie. So take that or leave it. Whatever. Uh, I will say this: the Spanish chick that was in this movie, Eli, she was hot as shit. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. She was in Baby Driver. She was in Baby Driver. She was also in Hobbs and Shaw. She didn't really do too much in this one, but she was like one of the main characters in this movie. Hot as shit. It was sometimes like Guy Pierce in the movie also. He's like breaking it down to Vin Diesel, like all the shit he's got. To, Vin Diesel, you got nanites in your blood, and you can blah blah blah, you can blah blah blah. They don't even put the camera on them. They put the camera on her the whole time, and just like she bending over the whole time, right? So I'm just like, <laughs> it's distracting the fuck out of me. Like I don't know what the hell Guy Pierce is talking about. <laughs> so and then they come back to Vin Diesel. Okay, did you catch all that? And I'm I'm in the audience like, no, nah, I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because it was just on her the whole time. And Vin Diesel was like, yeah, 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 go kill a bunch of dudes. I'm in the army and shit like that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's all I can tell you. Like I said, if you like Vin Diesel movies, you'll like this. If you like superhero movies in general, it wasn't a bad movie. It was, okay, it was passable entertainment. Yeah. Now, I know the the <clears throat> Rotten, Rotten Tomato, Tomato score, the critic scores, want to just throw this movie under the bus and say it was like, like okay, like Green Land or some shit like that. It wasn't that. It was just like another superhero movie you would you would see. Uh, if it came on TV again, I sit down like eh, okay, I watch it. You know, it wasn't abysmal. You know, it didn't offend me or anything like that. It was a pretty paint by numbers superhero movie where he gets superpowers. Yeah. He's you know, it wasn't X Men Origins or anything like that. Even though it had the exact same plot, which I'm gonna talk about later on. Pretty much an ex military vet. Uh, undergoes a procedure, gets superpowers, he becomes an unstoppable killing machine, healing powers, has amnesia, trying to get revenge on the organization that took away the woman he loves. Oh, that, oh yeah, that's Deadpool also. Okay, this is Deadpool. <laughs> this is Deadpool without the humor. That, it's it's Deadpool, dead shot, you know, death blow, death stroke, <laughs> right. blood shot. It's it's, it's all right. The same the shit. It's it's all the way. It's they're copy all and paste, terminate. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're all Punisher rip. <laughs> right. It's it's all. Yeah, I there. said it. Yeah. I said it. <laughs> so this thing, chew like, on that shit, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> now I've seen the Valiant guys are kind of afraid to say this movie was bad, but it's like the movie wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad. It was a serviceable movie. That's all I can say. It's serviceable. It was. I think. Yeah. I. I think, you know, because of Marvel and, and the standards are so high for comic book movies, yes, you know, you have to meet that certain criteria to be labeled a good movie, and some movies will fall through the crack, like 
Birds of Prey, like this movie, like, like I, like, like we got, I love Hellboy. No one else does. You know, you just got to, you know, if you're a fan, like, yeah, if you're a fan of the, 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 the of the comic, you might like that shit. Right. If you're not, you probably won't. And that's kind of where we're at now. You have like the popular movies and the, un, and the unpopular movies that just like the comic books. You have the, the, the big two DC and Marvel. Then you got a bunch of indies that no one reads and, you know, except a few fans that know the shit and like it and, you know, but but for the most part, yeah, we're seeing this difference in uh, the, the 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 quality and the and you know and our expectations of what we want from Marvel has spoiled us, and now we expect every comic book movie to be this grand epic, you know, thing. And right. some of them is just some of them you just want to see a dude shoot up a bunch of motherfuckers. Right. That's, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, you know the funny thing about it, like my date that uh went with me, uh like she you know, it said at the beginning of the movie based on best selling comic books like that. So she's gonna ask me, okay, so is he Marvel or DC? Um he's Valiant. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what the fuck is a Valiant? You know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I gotta break that shit down to her, you know, like that. But I was just like, whatever. But yeah, that's the thing. Like, and they didn't spend a whole lot. This movie budget was like forty million, some shit like that. So it's not like a Marvel movie where they just go all out, two hundred million, you know, rebuild Wakanda or some shit like that. It was a pretty like <laughs> basic, you know, action movie. It was just a regular action movie, just with a dude with superpowers in it, you know. So you can't expect this grandiose. Like it's just like exactly what you said. You can't expect this grandiose epic or anything like that. It was at the end of the day, it was a movie. They made a movie. Yeah. You know. And if you're a fan of Bloodshot, if you're a fan of the Valiant Universe, then you probably will like it. Probably won't, you know? because you know how these Valiant fans are. <laughs> you know, it didn't follow issue 23, where he, you know, some shit, like, they're gonna start nitpicking oh, that's just, shit. That's just comic nerd shit, though. Right. Everybody nerds just like that shit anyways. Right. But, you know, I mean, but yeah, I mean, there, there's, like, certain, because we've come a long way since... Since you know the shit, Steel you know what I watched. Spawn, yeah, you know what I. The fan. You know what I watched the other day? I watched the other day, like two days ago. The, the Sylvester Stallone, Judge Dredd. You know, I, I'll I be honest with you. I love that movie. I hadn't seen it in a while. Yeah, and I remember digging on it back then. You know, mm -hmm. but I watched it and I'm like, wow, the actors, they're so corny. Every all the performances are so over the top and yep. corny. It's like, you know what? They, this was back in the nineties. This is a comic book movie. They probably didn't take it. So you could totally tell the actors aren't taking it seriously. Right. They're just going through these big over the top caricature performances because it's a comic book movie. It's a comic book. So they think, oh, it's just comic book. It's not, not to be taken seriously. And that was back then. You know, right. but now you got Robert Downey Jr. and fucking, you know, making motherfuckers cry and shit. <laughs> right. You know, we expect more. We expect better performances from our superheroes and shit, you know. Right. So, yeah. And I will say that nobody in Bloodshot is given an Oscar in performance. Nobody. <laughs> Except that Spanish chick's ass. That's about it. <laughs> 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 that would get me to watch the Oscars. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and it was fucked up since movies are canceled for the rest of 2020. Bloodshot might be up for Oscar. It's the only movie that came out. <laughs> no shit. Bet and Birds of Prey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, let me slap a score on this bad boy. Okay. So, uh, what am I going to give it? What am I going to give it? Three to five. I almost gave it a 3.5 out of 5, but I feel like some of the action at the beginning was just kind of, huh? You know, and the trailer Which, fucked the movie. 13. The trailer fucked the If PG the trailer didn't fuck the movie, I would probably give it 3.5 out of 5. But as it stands, 35, because it's derivative, does this movie make me want to dig into Bloodshot comics? No. It pretty much just shows me that Bloodshot was exactly what I thought he was a, a Wolverine ripoff, Wolverine with guns. Yeah, but I was about to say, exactly. He's, just, you know, yeah. That's what the movie Punisher. came across, and that's what I always thought he was, you know. Punisher with the healing factor, you know. Basically, yeah. I mean, but Max, his... Max, Max Payne on God mode. You ever right. play Max Payne on <laughs> with God the mode? Code, right. Yeah. I mean, I, endless, endless ammo, endless life you know, energy. You're right. basically the fucking Terminator. You just go, <laughs> you just right. murk that's... motherfucker. And, 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 oh, it's I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm so glad you fucking said it. I'm so glad you said it. That's the thing about it. Okay, so Bloodshot is a, a ripoff of other comic book characters. However, this movie is a ripoff of other movies. But the comic book character is a ripoff of the movies also. This is Terminator, like you said. Uh, it's it's RoboCop writing down beat for beat. It's Robo it's a, this is a RoboCop. This is the RoboCop remake we deserve. 
<laughs> I would say this is better than the RoboCop remake we got. It's a better RoboCop movie than a RoboCop movie. It's also, oh, yeah. it's also word beat for beat. Not only RoboCop, Universal Soldier, which I oh, think yeah. also is a RoboCop ripoff. Also, so to me, that's all blood. <laughs> and keep in mind, Bloodshot came in the nineties. RoboCop Universal Soldier came in the eighties. You could tell that not only were they ripping off Wolverine, they were like, "I like RoboCop." What's your face? I like Universal. What's your name? Charlie Charlie Baltimore. What's the chick? What's uh, like, Charlie uh, Baltimore. Long kiss, good night. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, she didn't have she didn't have superpowers though. But she just could she's like a super, she was Black Widow before Black Widow. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Samuel Jackson was even in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> na, 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 na. <laughs> and I love that movie, Long Kiss Goodnight. But yeah, that's what this movie was. It was pretty much a ripoff of all those super soldiers, cybernetic, whatever the fucks, you know, come to kill. And that's that's how we ran the comic because like I said, Robocop was such a popular a movie that pretty much everybody's ripping them off. Hell, Frank Miller wrote the sequels of the comic. Mm-hmm. And they just turned that into a movie. So, yeah, that's all Bloodshot is. But like I said, he wrote, you, he wrote like, didn't he write like two and three? Like, yeah, he's a like he, yeah, because after the movie, I know came he wrote out, the third one because it's a ninja in that one. He put a ninja, he in put the a third ninja one. in that one. So, yeah, Frank Miller <laughs> is a screenplay. He's in the movie, actually. Oh shit! I uh, he has a cameo. I, I, I'm, not, I had to I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to go back and watch. It <laughs> but here's here's the thing. With it. Now, have you read those Frank Miller RoboCop comics? No. I've actually heard they're pretty good. I heard like, but you know how when I it so. yeah when it goes from comic you know to movie you know shit gets changed around like that. So they didn't yeah. adapt it how it should have been. But for the most part, well, that's like, what. Yeah. Yeah, that's what started his hate affair with Hollywood was working on those movies. Right, because he said they basically yeah. fucked the script up. One of these days I want to sit down and read those RoboCop comics. But, uh, yeah, the, basically the movie was like beef to be like a, a huge robot named Kane, calling himself RoboCop 2. But all that shit was in it. The Ninja, like you say, all that shit was in there. You know. <laughs> so And it was a Dark Horse book also, so that's the thing about it. Uh, uh, when he got ripped apart and all this shit and reprogrammed, all this shit was in the comic too. So, yeah, they ripped this shit off. So, Go fuck a refrigerator. <laughs> I don't remember that. So you're going to make me rewatch RoboCop 2 again. <laughs> That's RoboCop 2. <laughs> I just right. that little kid. Go fuck a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what I want to talk about with Bloodshot. We can talk, go a little bit deep into Bloodshot because Bloodshot comes from an era of comics. Now, for non-comic book fans, and when I mean comic book fans, I mean comic book fans that read comics. Now that I watched the cartoon or two, I watched the I watched all the MCU movies. No, the comic fans. They know what I'm talking about. Bloodshot comes from the 90s. Now, comic book fans mm-hmm. refer to the 90s as the Dark Ages. Like, you got the Bronze <laughs> Age, the Silver Age, the 90s was the Dark Age, because that's the shit that basically killed the industry. Because of all the stupid shit they were doing, all the, the bad heroes they were doing like this. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say Bloodshot was a bad hero, but I didn't read Bloodshot. I'm going to tell you why I didn't read Bloodshot. Because, yes, Bloodshot was pretty much every 90s superhero at the time. He was Deathstroke. He was Deadpool. He was Deathblow. He was Death something. He was Moon something. Whatever. Mm. The reason I didn't read him, even though he had the same backstory as all those other guys, because his art sucked. That's the thing. You can do Ooh. anything you... I'm sorry. They can hate, Eric <laughs> and them can hate me all they want to. Though That art on those first books fucking suck. Now, here's the thing. You can do anything you wanted back. Like, Jim Lee... Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane, Will Spasatio, all those, all those guys, they could do whatever they wanted. They had to green light do whatever they wanted and write whatever they wanted because the art, the writing sucked, but the art was beautiful. You open up a Spawn book, every Spawn page yeah. looked like a poster. You know, so half yeah. the time you didn't care what. Wildcats, shit. It was X-Men ripoff. Well, who cares? It looked awesome. Gen, thir- Gen 13. Gen 13. Yeah. Oh, the chick was like, <laughs> why was she naked in every, every page? <laughs> oh, no, my because... clothes got blown off. <laughs> Because we were stupid and, you know. <laughs> yeah, we were stupid. We were 14. I, okay, I answered my own question. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah. But but everybody had guns. That was the thing. Everybody, everybody had guns. Everybody had gu- guns, yeah. muscles, healing factor. Yeah. And if you was a team book, you had a guy on the team that w- had that shit. Guns, yeah. factory. Oh, and he smoked. Wet, yeah. Wet Works. Fucking oh, was a I team seven. Yeah. I remember what I, I used to read some. I read some Wet Works. <laughs> Young Blood, all this <laughs> Blood Strike, Super oh, Patriot, Cyber remember, Force. Remember Super Patriot? Oh, oh yeah, Cyber, Cyber Force. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's why the ninety. Yeah, Cyber Force. Yeah, Cyber Force. Cyber Force. Was, I kind of like Cyber Force. Cyber Force, Cyber Force had that Rip Claw Wolverine. Dude. Yeah, Rip Claw, na- Native Wolverine. Yeah, Native Wolverine. He <laughs> I, was kind of cool. I, I, I'm not even gonna lie. It was, <laughs> 
<laughs> he was he was native Wolverine. I I had some. I I met fucking uh, what's his name? Silvestri. Mark Silvestri. Mark Silvestri did Cyber Force. That's right. Yeah. At, at a con, and I had my blood, blood, not bloodshot. <laughs> Get him confused. Rip, rip death claw. blow or rip, yeah. <laughs> death blow. I got death blow too. I got that death blow glossy cover. And Still, that's probably the, I, keep confused, I keep getting confused. Bloodshot with death blow because there's so many death blood moon yeah, war that's a, strike dudes yeah. back then. Yeah, blood strike, blood stroke. Well, Deathstroke. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, I keep getting, I don't know who is who. I just know that okay, this dude has shitty right, uh, shitty artwork. So I know he's with the other team. He's not, he's not Image. Yeah. You know? Well, fucking yeah. Like, oh yeah, Mark Sylvester. He signed my Rip, Rip Claw book. Um, but I yeah, I was yeah, like Mark Sylvester. He was my dude. I mean, I was well, read the Darkness and fucking Witchblade. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Witchblade. Oh shit. Yeah, she was naked all the time. <laughs> those books also. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was in all that shit. Lady Death. I was an image though, but I was I was reading Lady Death. Because she was naked, evil. also. Ernie. Yeah, she was just a big old titty bitch taking over hell, killing. She, she had her own swimsuit issue. Dope. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> like why? What, we know why. Yeah, I answered my that's question. all. That's the nineties. Guns and tits. Right. <laughs> they thought that's all we wanted, and it's pretty much all we did want it because those all the that's books we sold. Did. <laughs> Yeah, the the wizard swim shoot issue. The like, swim I, keep, I, keep, I keep telling people like, why did X Men was, was so popular in the nineties? That's why the X Men was so popular in the nineties. Storm, Rogue, Jean Grey with mm-hmm. that green short skirt. Uh, Psylocke. Psylocke. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> That's why it was popular. Because yeah. for some reason, yeah. whenever it, Professor X called them, X Men, come to the room. We have a uh, emergency. They were always in the shower for some reason. Like yeah. why? <laughs> then you get yeah. Then Gen thirteen. What's her face? Uh, Ch- uh, Fair child, child yeah, name? yeah. Fucking uh, the 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 native broad. What was her name? Riptide. M- M- rain, rain dancer or whatever the fuck or rain <laughs> something or some fucking rain some shit. I can't even. I was stupid. I right. hated Gen Thirteen just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they were all drawn with big tits and fat asses and, and you know always bending over. You know, like you know Not even even, even in battle. I used to read even Catwoman in back battle. Then. I used to read Catwoman back then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like even while they were fighting. Like there'd be a big fight scene, and the, the, all the chicks would be all like a doggy style and shit with their legs spread open. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh man, that's why the '90s suck, man. And that's why, and that's why you know Todd, Todd McFarlane invented the the necroplasm meter, so it was an excuse for to give fucking spawn guns. You know, yeah, <laughs> you know, if he like, uses his power. Like you're a wizard, it'll, it'll, you're it'll, a magic dude. Why do you have guns? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, well, his power starts draining if he keeps using it. So he, you know, so I, I, I he can't use his power all the time. That's why he uses guns. So, Not even gonna lie, Eli. So, when I saw uh, Spawn pull guns, I was like, "This is the greatest shit I've ever seen in my life." It, it, it sure fucking was. <laughs> <It> sure... <laughs> like they knew what they knew what to sell us. <laughs> Yeah, I was at that prime age. I was like, shit, fuck Marvel. This right. is the real dope shit here, man. Right. I mean, because we thought he was like a magic dude. He's just magic. Like, no, nah, I got fucking guns. And like, I'm going to just blow some motherfuckers away. Okay, like, so he's like, he's like Punisher and Doctor Strange put together. Yeah. Which, which sounds fucking up. Why I was like, fuck, fuck the Hulk. Right. Yeah, I was even like, fuck the Hulk. Pit, motherfucker. Pit. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Pit. <laughs> oh, like, shit. I never understood Pit. Oh, he was just man. weird. No, but yeah. Well, at the, he took like a, an issue every six months. That was another thing. His image guys got delayed, and like, yeah, like yeah, they were too Pitt busy was delayed and, so long. Yeah, cocaine and shit. Yeah. What the fuck they were doing? You know, they were yeah, they're all like rich. Yeah, they were rock stars. Lifefield, McFarland, they were all rock stars. Yeah, fucking and Kevin Eastman, the guy of Ninja Turtle marrying Julie Strain, oh, penthouse yeah. pet Julie Strain. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> like man, that's and then they had they, since they were independent, nobody could tell them what to do. They just do whatever they want to do. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Oh. But yeah, Bloodshot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my thing. His art sucked. That's the thing about art. And now maybe maybe he's gotten better. Maybe his stories have gotten you know more fleshed out. You know, like like I said, these these valiant dudes, these fanboys, just go fucking crazy over him. They just love Bloodshot. But I'm like, I, I never. Don't, I don't see the appeal. Yeah, that's just me. Yeah, I never fucked with Valiant because the first Valiant book I ever saw was that Magnus, the robot fighter. The dude in the, the dress? And the Google yeah. boots? Yeah, and he was just punching robots. And oh, I just so thought. Was he a robot? Eh. 
or did he fight robots? Like I never understood I the robot fighter thing. I didn't read it to figure it out. Okay, I, didn't, like, I just I know this dude has a dress and, and go-go boots, and he's punching robots. I'm like, and no. that was like, eh, no, I'm not gonna read Valiant. And I, that was like, I was turned off to Valiant just because right. of that. That was their, that was their guy. They pushed him. That was their Superman. That was their Spawn. This this dude in the dress. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I'm just like, maybe bring him back or something. I don't know. So that was funny. Like all these years later, when I'm, people are talking about Valiant, I was like, really. The robot robot fighter guy? Like, where's he? Wait, where thing, is he? <laughs> yeah, the thing about the robot fighter guy, I don't think they own the rights to him. I think they license him or something. So I don't think they even own the rights to him anymore. Okay. Yeah, because I think he's like an old 50s character or something like that. He just had yeah, just hanging around. Yeah. yeah, maybe. He seemed really cheesy, but I just remember Valiant. Like, they, like, they're, like they were trying to be like Image. You know what I mean? They were like another company, and they were pushing hard. And, you know. I well, just, see, and that's the thing I want to talk about, Valiant. That, I guess we're gonna talk. I guess it's gonna be a Valiant episode. I guess. Okay. So the reason <laughs> Valiant got started, and I don't even know if the Valiant guys know this, because they got started by Jim Shooter. Now, Jim Shooter is a very controversial figure because Jim Shooter is the guy that pretty much made Marvel what it is. After Stanley, of course, he's the guy that pretty much invented the crossover event. Uh, he's okay. the guy that used to write all those Avengers books and shit like that. Uh, he wrote Secret Wars. Uh, he pretty much made it like when he was running Marvel that continuity had to be a thing and if it didn't I'm firing you that's pretty much what it is they hated his ass eventually he got fired so he got fired from there bounced around a little bit there and then he got picked up by, by Valiant he helped start Valiant and he ran Valiant the exact same way continuity had to be key so if you read so reading Bloodshot you weren't just reading Bloodshot you had to read the whole Valiant universe to know what the fuck was going on because mm -hmm. Exo Man of War yeah. would show up and, you know. Yeah, because when I did eventually start reading, like, because we, we remember we, you know, shout out to Eric, you know, Ogar mm -hmm. on Get Valiant. He used to podcast with us and he's a huge, you know, he's a huge Valiant fan. Right. And I remember reading, just picking up like whatever, Harbinger or whatever it was. And yeah, it made references to, you know, yeah, because like Bloodshot would show up in, in Harbingers and all that and and. Yeah, Bloodshot fought the with the Psyots and all the kids and that that's the stuff that I read. I didn't I'm not a can't say I'm a big fan. I didn't follow it that long, but I did read some of that. And yeah, he it's all connected. Yeah, Bloodshot fights with the Harbinger. The Harbinger war I did read the Harbinger Wars. Mm -hmm. You know, that they're X Men or whatever, they're mutants, they're a special ability team. And that's you know, the thing about Valiant. All of the yeah. heroes just seem like rip offs of other heroes. So Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they're just they're just it's just a little bit more violent. That's the thing. It's like what Image was doing. It was a superhero, same superhero trope, only they could, you know, they could swear, they could get get bloody, they could their their chicks are naked running around. <laughs> I mean, Image was doing that, so it's like you know. Yeah, you know, but uh, but yeah, I mean that that's that's what it seemed like. It was just like a harder version of, um, of 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 stuff we already know. You know, right. I mean, like adult, I said, Bloodshot couldn't adult, be, you know? yeah, he couldn't be made back in the 60s or the 70s because you, you can yeah. look at him and tell this is a hero born from the 90s. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what the, my comic guy, my, uh, you know, Tony at Level you know level Up, I mean, they got a few stores open around town, but the one I was going to, he, you know, when I first picked up Bloodshot, he was like, oh yeah, he's the totally 90s. That's what he said to me right. when I picked up the Bloodshot. <laughs> That's some real total '90s shit right there. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> like he's born from that era. This, this, this. like that's yeah. the, that, you can tell every hero when they were born from. Like for instance, uh, like heroes from the, the last decade. They don't make new heroes. They just making just race swap and ginger swap versions of those heroes. What's the most popular mm -hmm. hero of the 2010s era? Miles Morales, Spider Man. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say Ms. Marvel. <laughs> Okay, Kamala Marvel, Khan. Same same thing. <laughs> yeah, Kamala Khan. Yeah, right. The same thing. So. You know. Yeah, yeah. No shit. So you that's know? them. What they're doing. But like I said, the nineties. That's what they did. They were just like guns, titties, pouches, muscles. That's what it was. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. So you can just tell, I mean, that's how that's you know. that's where Deadpool got popular. I mean. And, and, pretty and much, that's the thing, like when Lightfield yeah, made Deadpool, he, he was he, like the catalyst almost of that shit. Him and Cable were like the catalyst. Of oh, that. I forgot about Cable. Oh, how do we yeah. forget about Cable? Cable, yeah, with his big giant vacuum cleaner guns and shit. <laughs> <laughs> guns bigger than him and shit. You know? Yeah, 
Like, what the fuck are those things shooting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That yeah. 90s suck, man. It was so bad. I remember I keep posting a picture about even Superman had guns at one time. Yeah, yeah. Like During why? the reign of Superman, he just pulled out guns and shit. Like, why does Superman have guns? And a knife. Yeah, well, he had a knife on him. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Right, can we move past that? Sure. Or do we have anything else to talk about before I move to the bitch gang section? Well, I mean, I just said I read that new Bloodshot issue. Do you want to talk about? I mean, no, 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 I we're gonna talk to... about that in the in the thing. Oh, you want to talk about comics? Oh, I thought it was. I thought there was going to be a, the whole Bloodshot. Uh... I don't want to talk about Bloodshot. That we can, we're going to direct everybody to get valued. Okay. Yeah. Because I barely don't. I don't really know. So I was. Well, you, you can I was gonna try. I was just gonna try to ride the Bloodshot wave. Yeah, and I read the comic. Oh, yeah, we're gonna talk about it. we're gonna talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it later on. <laughs> All right, so uh, video game section real quick. We talk about E three is canceled. Duh, yeah. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers. As long as everything else, as long as everything. It was big news Monday when it happened, but now it's not that big news. So yeah, they saying yeah. the thing might push back uh the Xbox Five and the Xbox PlayStation whatever stuff like that because all the shit comes from China. So mm. who knows? Yeah. We'll see. Uh, let me see. We can move on to the next part of the podcast. Sure. All right. This is the part where we actually talk about the comic books of the comic book bullies, where Eli also talk about more bloodshot because <laughs> this is where <laughs> he was born from. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about the X Minute. And I guess we're going to talk about, oh, uh, well, I'm going to talk about what X Men number eight or nine. Which one is this one? This is number, how to find it? Number eight. Okay. X Men number eight. So based on how the book starts off, um, is it starts off in space and it's the brood. Now the brood is the old. The brood actually predate the aliens, but oh, yeah. they're pretty much brood. the same thing. Yeah. Oh so, shit! The brood's back, huh? Yeah. The brood. Oh yeah, I love the brood, man. The brood, awesome. Brood, brood's awesome. Yeah, they don't use the brood like like they need to. But anyway, the brood My, are coming yeah. to to Earth. Uh, the summers see them first. You know, the summers live on the moon, and Havoc and Cyclops see their brother, uh, Vulcan, Gabriel, whatever his name is. He's on the ground, drunk as shit with his friends, because uh, apparently he parties every night that hard. In their house, they're like, dude, you gotta clean up, you gotta do something. You just can't be here, just getting drunk all the fucking night and shit like that. Like, no, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to forget, I'm trying to ease the pain or whatever. And then they look up and then they see the brood, you know, pass by them from the moon and head straight to Earth. Like, what the fuck is the brood going to the Earth for? Now, the reason the brood is going to Earth, and they're not only just going to Earth, they're going to Krakoa. The reason they're going to Krakoa because your people, the New Mutants. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We went to they came, they're back from their Shi'ar adventure and shit like that so they're back on Krakoa and they took from them uh the egg from the one of the uh one of the broods brood or whatever you know they oh hives or whatever like that they took one of the eggs so the brood apparently can track that egg anywhere in the in the galaxy and they're headed right to Krakoa to get there and they uh, invade Krakoa and just this big bug fight and shit like that and the x-men just fighting bugs and shit cyclops is, uh, goes to magic he like uh, open a path, open a portal for me. I'm about to blast them, so make sure you get your people out of the way. So she opens up like a, a, a like a thousand portals and shit like that. He blasts his heat vision through one of them, and the heat vision goes through the, all the other portals and other things, just like kills a whole bunch of bugs like that. Like, okay, that's a pretty cool way to use your powers. But they realize they're not going to want to fight like that because the brood is going to just keep coming. They're like, this is just the first wave. They're going to keep coming until they get this this egg. So what we need to do. Get this egg and get it the fuck out of here. So they're gonna take the egg and they're gonna go to the Shi'ar space to get the uh the brood away from them. But while they're doing hold that, on, hold on. yeah. No, go ahead. No, oh, no. okay, okay, cool. All right. So oh, meanwhile, while they're heading to Shi'ar space, we go to Shi'ar space and we see that the Star Jammers have been kidnapped by Ronan the Accuser. Ronan the Accuser wants the egg for himself. Why he want it, we don't know. But he made a deal with Sunspot, not Sunshine, Sunspot, Sunspot, Sunspot got on a phone call with Ronan Cusin saying, I can get this egg for you if you let the Star Shammers, Stammers go. Uh, and Smasher, who's one of the Imperial Guard of the Shi'ar, overheard the conversation. She called Gladiator, telling yeah, right, Gladiator that the, uh, the X-Men have the egg no, and headed to Shi'ar space. And wait. Ronan the Accuser is looking for him. So apparently going to be some big blowout between the X-Men the Shi'ar, Ronan the Accuser, the Star Jammers, and the Brood, and is going to fight it out in, in Shi'ar space. That's what it looked like it's going, but I guess we're going to wait for the next issue. Uh, it seemed like this is the first two-part, because so far, Hickman has been writing all these X-Men stories as one-shots. They've all been one one-and-done stories. 
So there's no way. This, I hope this is not some cliffhanger. He goes to the next issue and it's some other bullshit we're talking about. I want to see what this leads to because it seems like it's going to be an all out war, especially since, you know, I want to see something that has lo longer lasting conflicts of what's going on with this story right now. So overall, I'll give the book a 3.5 out of 5 if it's a setup for another story. So yeah, we can go from there. All right, cool. Hey, could you hold on a sec? I got to go deal with my kid. I got to do some daddy shit real quick. Oh, cool. Just, cool. Uh, take care. Like, take yeah, care. just we'll, we will just yeah, uh, just edit this part out or whatever. Okay. Uh, like, give me a few minutes. Yeah, hold up. Cool. <laughs> That's the girl from Infamema. Uh Yes, we're doing uh, interlude right now. And I guess I would do another one for the long, uh, soft nights of comic book bullies. You are listening to us tonight. Uh, we're taking callers if you want to call in, even though we're not recording live. But just in case, if you do, we will. Uh, what other little doodle diddles do we have tonight? Uh, do, 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 yeah, I'm going to edit this out, but I'm just keep going anyway. You know what I can do? While he's going, I'm going to just talk more about Bloodshot on there. I'm going to actually do some spoils on there. So if you're not, if you don't want to hear any spoils about what's going on with Bloodshot, tune out because I'm just going to go with that. So apparently with Bloodshot, uh, what also happened in that one is... Some good other good things. Here's the twist that happened with Bloodshot. And if you've seen the trailer, you know what's going on. So apparently he was going around killing all these people that the government was telling him to kill. But what they were doing is that they were reprogramming his head to make him think whoever they wanted to kill was killing. So that was the twist that was spoiled in the trailer that we didn't know what was going to happen. So it wasn't as predictable as you thought it was going to be. It was actually kind of an uh, interesting twist because he wasn't killing who you thought he was. He was actually working for the bad guys the entire time. And it's basically the whole moral of the plot of the movie was basically saying like whatever your past was, no matter how violent your past was, is uh, these evil corporations want to control you, but you have your own freedom. And that's what the whole point of it was trying to make because evil corporations will try to uh, turn you to a barcode and they not want to do that. Uh, oh, I heard some other crazy shit also. So here's the crazy thing, and I want to tell Eli about this, but there's some other crazy shit that people are actually connecting Bloodshot to the coronavirus. <laughs> here's some weird shit I heard. So apparently the coronavirus, they were saying, is because there's all kinds of conspiracy theories out right now. So the coronavirus uh, is apparently man-made by the government because apparently there's a worldwide government that wants to eliminate everybody for some reason. I don't know, weird theory. But let me just keep going with that one. So apparently they were like, yeah, just like if you watch that Bloodshot movie, because in the Bloodshot movie, the government takes him and they inject him with all kind of nano machines and nanobites into his blood. That's what the government is doing to us now. That's why they want us to get vaccine so they can turn us into Bloodshot. They're trying to tell you what's going on right now. You got to understand. Open your third eye. Wake the fuck up, my brother. Bloodshot is telling you what they're doing. So I'm like, Y'all smoke too much weed. I'm sorry. There's no way Bloodshot is a precursor or a harbinger to what's going on with COVID-19 right now. You're making too big of a leap of logic right now. It doesn't make any sense. So, no, it's not. It's a movie. That's all. It's just a movie. Watch it. Forget about your brain. Leave it at the door. And when you leave it at a the theater, pick it back up on the way back out. That's all. Everything had to be a conspiracy theory. That's what, how is it? How is coronavirus a conspiracy theory anyway? How is this mission accomplished that they have everybody panic and feel like that? Who is profiting from this? Who? The entire world is in panic mode right now. So there's not like one single government that is profiting from this. Matter of fact, uh, the government is losing money with all the stuff like that. Who's profiting from Disney World getting shut down? Who's profiting from all the percent Get it for when it's done. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I feel like he just walked in. Over. <laughs> All right. Damn it, Eli, I was having a good conversation. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You play it back when we. <laughs> you play it back when we get there. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I just went on a rant. I don't even know what I was talking about for a second. Oh. Well, good job. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm hungry with you. Just, just, just because. <laughs> well, just because I gotta you, have man. your back. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was actually, I, right. I, I, when you can listen to it, uh, second ago, I'll let you listen to it, but I actually connected how people on Twitter are connecting Bloodshot to the coronavirus, how Bloodshot predicted it. Oh, really? Yeah. You listen, just listen to it later on and you'll get to okay. it. <laughs> but, I'm just uh, trying to think. Are we, is this all going to give us like nanites and shit? <laughs> that's what they're saying. Because we're going to get vaccine. Okay. And we're all going to like get healing factor and shit? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Become some war soldiers, yeah. <laughs> Open okay. your third eye, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> Stay woke. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, it, it's your turn. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll go with uh, Immortal Hulk number thirty-two. Oh, it did come out. Uh, Zemu yeah. is on it. Zemu, yep. Zemu is back. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, Zemu, like the first Hulk, has returned. Um, the Minotaur, he's like the CEO of Roxxon. He's engineered Zemu and to make it look like he saved the city from that giant monster attack last issue. And they blamed it all on the Hulk. So now Zemu, he's all on TV. He's gone viral. He's a big hero. The public loves him. You know. But Zemu has found a way to like plant false memories in everybody's head. Sort of like that weaponized nostalgia. Um, and it's like the Mandela effect. You know? Well, you think something has happened, but it never really happened. Yeah. Yeah, where the, the the public has like this has this false memory that they all sort of believe in, just through like mass hysteria or whatever. Um, but they plan on taking over the world, so there's this you know that they're using it to basically distract everybody, and they're going to take over the world and turn the Earth into like this magic planet. And I think that has to do with whatever happened in War of the Realms or whatever, because the Minotaur, some shit. But magic planet and magic planet is also the name of the TV show. That everybody keeps saying, "Oh yeah, I remember Zemu. He was on the Magic Planet TV show." <laughs> you know. <laughs> um. Uh. So yeah. So and yeah. So that's their planning. He ends up like eating, like uh, this one of the Minotaur's like uh, assistants. Like really weird. Like the the Zemu is like kind of like mechanical. It's really weird. He ends up eating this guy. It's 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 a really Man. weird, bizarre scene. Of how the mechanics of Zemu works, I was I was like, what the fuck? Anyways, so cut to Bruce Banner. He's all loopy. His mind has been taken over by Zemu, just like the rest of the world, and he's been suppressing the Hulk. You know, he, and so the Hulk can't change. He can't change into the Hulk because, you know, Bruce Banner's mind's been taken over, and he can't bring the Hulk out. You know, and the, the Hulk personalities. So Doctor McGowan, um, she's one of the uh, the scientist from the shadow site who's basically working with the crew now. Um, she begins to realize that Zemu is, um, she, you know what he's doing. She, she realized he's that this, that these are false memories and all that shit. And she, there's this really interesting scene with doc Sampson. And, um, she explains that she's trans, she's transgender. And, um, the way she was able to figure out what Zemu is doing is by her transition to, you know, w with her transition, how she was able to figure out who she was, was by this sort of reflecting on what the world was trying to force on her as what, you know, what those outside expectations of what the world, you know, uh, throws and in, in sort of labels what your gender is supposed to do. So she was able to like block those out and sort of do this whole self recovery or discovery, like, like sort of figure out who she is and learn to black out the, what the outside world was trying to expect her to be as, as a woman, you know, or as a man or whatever. Um, so she was able, so she's able to resist like, uh, Zemu's like, um, deception. Um, and then meanwhile, the Hulk is inside Banner and he's like, I gotta, I, I can't change stupid Banner. He, he doesn't remember me, blah, 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 blah. And then another Hulk, another personality emerges from inside Banner's head. And he's like, yeah, you, you're not strong enough to, uh, to, 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 to uh, you know, make Banner remember you, but I am. And then he emerges from the shadow, and this is all in Banner's head. Mm -hmm. He emerges from the shadow, and it's World Breaker Hulk from oh, Planet shit. Hulk. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. And that's where the book ends. 
Oh, so, so yeah, so um, they've they been sitting on that one for a while. Yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, again, very interesting and layered with commentary. <laughs> so many <laughs> levels of, of commentary going on in here. Just, to, you know, first of all, it's like, you know, uh, the, the whole weaponized nostalgia is, is one thing, you know, just, you know, how it's just sort of a distraction, you know, that... Um, that how uh, you know like comic books and movies are just, are just a distraction while the you know the the powers that be brainwash you. That's like one thing going on. But then there's also a comment on how the you know how how it's easily to to manipulate the public's thinking by the media. You know, so it's very relevant and timely right now. You know how you're way, able to sway the public's opinion just through panic and you know whatever, and then give them a distraction. <laughs> Give them a distraction, like comic book movies and comic. <laughs> and remember this, you know. So again, a lot of cool, you know, deep layers to this book. Um, yeah, this is another four out of five. Not a lot of action, but very, uh, very um, deep, philosophical and deep. I must say, you know. So yeah. Cool. Okay. Um. So the next book I'm gonna do, since we're sticking with the X Men, we're gonna stick to X Men, and we're gonna talk about uh, Cable Number One. Another okay. 90s hero with big guns and pouches and muscles and shit. So, yeah. So the book starts off. Uh, they are in, what do they call this thing? The quandary? The quarry. The quarry. They're in the quarry. So the quarry is this, <clears throat> basically this uh, base like Coliseum uh, gladiator match between two mutants and the whole Chris Cohen society sits in just watching. It's like a sporting event and shit like that. And different mutants go in there and fight. Today's fight is Cable versus Wolverine. And Wolverine uh, slices Cable gun in half, and he's like, "Yeah, the fight's about to be over." He's like, "Nope, not really." So when he slices gun in half, Cable uses his techni- uh, telekinesis, you know, his TK, to make Wolverine's bones so heavy he can't stand up. So he wins. Now I do want to go back and say that this this Cable is not the Cable you remember. If you haven't been reading X Men comics in a while, this is teenage Cable, teenage Kid Cable. Cable, Kid Cable, if you want to call, if you if you will. Uh, <laughs> in another story, he came back from the future to kill old Cable, and he just took his place and just like, okay, I'm here. I'm just gonna hang out. So, why? He he's just there. Whatever. So, Cable beats Logan. Everybody loses money because everybody betted on Wolverine, thinking he was gonna win, but Cable won. And Cable wanted to go celebrate. I'm gonna have a threesome with Armor and Pixie. Bye. And so, while he's getting ready to go with them. Uh, Armor's like, yeah, we're going to teleport to Hong Kong and just hang out there the rest of the week. But before they can do that, this little kid runs up the cable and tells Cable that I need your help, Cable. I can't tell the adults because if I tell the adults, they're going to get mad at me. But I can talk to you because you'll understand. Uh, My best friend ran off in the other side of the woods to the Monster Island and she wasn't supposed to do that, but she's over there. I need somebody to go get her. Now, to recap in one of those earlier stories, Krakoa connected with another island to become one but the x-men are actually forbidden uh forbade to go to the other island because the island of the monster they haven't you know they haven't uh explored it yesterday like to stay off the island we don't know what's over there but the other little kid ran over there also so cable decided to go over there cable used the telecon uh, tele uh telepathy to find out where the kid was found it no problem found the kid but then some big ass giant lion monster uh, came out to fight Cable. Now the ki- the little kid is scared, so Pixie was like, you know, since you're scared, I'm gonna use my hallucinogenic uh powers to make you think it's something else, so you won't be as scared. So she throws Pixie dust on the shit like that. The kid starts smiling. Whoo! So all of a sudden, instead of like some big lion monster fighting Cable, it to her it looks like some big puppy dog teddy bear that uh Cable's just playing baseball with. But he's not really playing baseball. He's throwing a fucking grenade at her. You know. So throwing a grenade, the monster's just fighting. Apparently, they find out why the monster is pissed because the monster has a sword stuck in in uh, one of its hooves or feet or whatever like that. So Cable uses TK to pull the sword out. He's like, hey, I got a sword. I'm keeping this. And out of the shadows comes Cyclops. Cyclops like, didn't I tell all of you not to come to this island? And Cyclops, uh, Cable's like, hi, Dad. My fault. And Pixie and Armor just go like, yeah, we'll see you later. We, we know you're in trouble, you know. So he has a conversation. He's like, I know why they was in trouble. I came to help out. Cyclops was like, I'm not too mad at you. Just don't do it again. But here's the thing. That sword has significance. 
Okay, do you remember Rom the Space Knight? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so ain't he, ain't he, he on a fucking uh, IDW now? Probably IDW, so. Ain't he? Probably so. I think Rom Space Knight is an IDW, but in the eighties, Rom the Space Knight was with Marvel, and he was in continuity yeah. with Marvel, like six oh six one six canon all this stuff like that. I'm saying it to say this: Rom's not in this book, <laughs> but okay, the Space Knights are in the book. The Space Knights, you know, that race of Space Knights he come from, they're actually been sleeping for 3,000 years. When Cable picks up that sword, they wake up and it's like, oh, we got to go find this sword. So they fly from whatever galaxy they are and they're headed to Krakoa right now. But like I said, it's going to take whatever, whatever. Now, at the end of the story, which is actually drawn by a completely different artist, there's this crab monster that is about to attack and he gets shot by old Cable. To be continued. Okay. That's that's the book. Yeah. So old cables. Here. Daddy cable. Daddy cable. Yeah. yeah the cable we know. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> so even though he's supposed to be dead, he's here. How is he here? We don't know. Find out next time on cable of our lives. I don't know. So overall, a whatever book. It wasn't the strongest book. I thought Wolverine was strong. Wolverine. I felt like Wolverine is more shocking, especially they gave it like mm-hmm. two stories. You know. This is just yeah. paint by numbers, and I don't know how I feel about Kid Cable because, like I said, we remember like what if what if they made a kid bloodshot? You know, it wouldn't be the same, and that's kind of what I feel like. I don't know how I feel about Kid Cable. I don't know Cable to be an old grizzled badass, not some whiny kid that get caught by his dad when he sneaks off and shit. You know, to go have threesomes with with other hot teenagers and shit. I don't know. It's uh. 3.5. I'm going to still give it 3.5 out of 5. It was still a, a fun read because Jerry, Jerry Dugan, Gary Dugan, Gary Duggan. Nobody knows how to say this dude's name. Whatever Duggan it is. Dugan. I guess. <laughs> but whatever his name is, <laughs> he's always. I thought it was Dugan. Then I hear everybody say Duggan. Somebody like, says Duggan. Fuck? Somebody says Jerry. Somebody says Gary. I'm like, I, whatever. That guy. Duggan. Yeah. Duggan. It's like cookie, but <laughs> it's right. not cookie. It's cookie. But he always Duggan. write fun stories, so I'm going to just give him a pass on this, and I'm going to say 3.5 out of 5. Nothing you just had to read, but whatever. So. Alright. Well, shit. Should I just do the Star Wars minute? Yeah, knock it out. That's, like that's, that's our thing. We a... trademark it. Yeah, okay. It's the Star Wars minute. Here we go. We need a name uh, for it, though. Yeah, the, the, the Force... Fun time? I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so Bounty Hunters, number one. We got Boba Fett, Bosk, and Valance. Haven't seen Valance in a while. I guess he popped up in a Darth Vader book that I didn't read. But Valance is an old-ass fucking character from the old Marvel comics, you know, way back in the day and shit. He was like a Terminator guy, um, robot, so cyborg dude. Um, anyways, this deals with some botched job that they were all involved in in the past where like this client got killed who happened to be like part of some big crime syndicate. Um, years later, there's like this largest bounty ever is like offered throughout the galaxy and they all come back, uh, Valance, um, they all back to get, you know, they all come back to try and get this, this bounty, um, Valance is on it. Boss teams up with Dr. Afra and Black Cranston, which was kind of cool. And then Boba Fett, he's got frozen Han Solo. So this is obviously takes place during Empire Strikes Back. Right. So Boba Fett's in Slave One flying with frozen Han Solo, and he gets the call. They're like, yeah, this is like the biggest bounty hunter ever, or bounty ever offered, the highest job ever paid. And Fett's like, Boba Fett's like, okay, I'll take it, but I'll do it for free. Okay, you could, uh, reputation. So obviously, yeah. obviously, Boba Fett's got some beef with whatever's whatever this job. I, I thought he was doing kind of like a reputation, just like okay, my name is out there, but okay, but it may. Oh no, no, he, he's pissed off at whoever it's for. So, oh, this motherfucker's okay. And he's got, and he's, and so he's gonna do this while he's got fucking uh, Han Solo on him. And remember, there's a bounty for Han Solo. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> So yeah, so just, it's just flexing Boba's, uh, you know, Boba flexing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of, this is a fun book. Lots of action and uh, and art's really good. Four out of five. Um, Darth Vader number two. We found out that Padme is not alive. So Shocker. last issue, yeah, last issue. Vader's looking for like all the people that led Luke to become like good. 
to become the light side, made him weak in Vader's eyes. So he uh, he travels around, ends up on Nibu, on Nabu. I was going to say no. <laughs> uh, ends up on Nabu, sees Padme, you know, last issue. But then, you know, it turns out it's not Padme. It's one of her decoys. Remember, she had decoys. Oh, yeah. You she know, had like she had, had she, yeah. body, body doubles, you know, basically body bodyguards who basically got killed for her. <laughs> like Saddam Hussein. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh and Vader ends up manipulating her into working with him. So to get revenge, she thinks she's gonna go get revenge on whoever killed Padme, which I think is pretty twisted. So he goes, Vader killed her, but you know, he's not telling her that. He's like, Oh yeah, come along with me and we'll get vengeance on whoever killed Padme. So, <laughs> so that was another four out of five. Um, and then of course I read uh The Rise of Kylo Ren. Number four, this wraps up this story arc, and it's basically, you see how Kylo Ren falls to the dark side. You know, he kills all the Jedi, he kills the leader of the, 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 the Knights of Ren, takes his place, he gets his mask, he gets his name, and, you know, it's just that the saga is complete. So it's, it's, it's fun, four out of five, and that's the Star Wars Minute. Oh, that's it? I thought you had more. Okay. I thought, yeah, it was only three. So. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, so my last book, not my book of the week, but my last book I'm going to do is, uh, what are we at? Thor number three. So, Danny Case, y'all. Okay. We, we got, no, I'm sorry, for, Thor number four. Book is moving. Okay. Yeah, so we got to represent Donny Case because Comic Cast have washed their hands from him. So, they, they no longer, you know, they have forsaken Donny Case for some reason. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, based with the book it on the cover, it's Sith versus Thor. That doesn't happen. Based with what happens in the last book, Thor fought Beta Ray Bill because Beta Ray Bill saw him hanging out with Galaxy. He was like, okay, this motherfucker's off, off the reservation. But Thor actually wanted to have a fair fight. So he gave away his power cosmic so Thor, so Beta Ray Bill could fight him fair and square. He beat Beta Ray Bill's ass broke Stormbreaker, and before he could like really finish him off, Sith popped out of nowhere because Sith, Lady Sith is now the Asgardian gatekeeper. You know, Heimdall died in War of the Realms like that, so it's Sith jobs now. So Sith like, yeah, this fight is ended. I'm taking Beta Reveal back with me. Uh, and Thor, what the hell are you doing? You're supposed to be on the throne of Asgard. Why the hell are you hopping around space with Galactus? Like, don't worry about what the hell I'm doing. I'm your king. You do whatever I say. Don't worry about what I'm doing. And Sif's like, no, I'm going to get involved. So Thor is like, okay, fine, get involved. He throws Monia directly at her, but since she controls the Bifrost, she teleports uh, Thor, uh, Monia away. And Thor's like, what the hell are you doing, Monia? I-, I send it away to Jotunheim. Jotunheim, of course, is the Frost Giant, and because of the aftermath of War of the Realms, Loki is now king of the Frost Giant. So he's just chilling in his throne room, and Monia just lands right in his, you know, in his throne room. He's just like, is that Monia? Is this a trick? So he walks around Monia, looks at it you're like hmm i wonder reaches down and actually picks up monier like what the fuck okay he wouldn't expect that to happen like this is interesting but before he can find out what's going else with it monier flies back to thor you know uh Siv teleports back to asgard she was like thor whenever you quit doing this dumb shit you're doing come back and rule your people but before you can do that galactus shows up again on the planet glass like thor i'm hungry bring your ass let's go get something to eat you're like shit so they just fly through the next three planets. So the next three planets, the same thing. Thor rescues the people off the planet. Galactus eats. Rinse, repeat. Rinse, repeat. Now we get to the fifth planet, fifth and final planet. This is the last planet uh, Galactus is going to eat. Uh, Thor goes down to the planet, and the people are saying, Thor, we're not leaving. Like, if you don't leave, Galactus will eat you. Yeah, we know. We're not leaving. So uh, while he's still arguing with him, trying to get off the planet, Galactus is like, look, I'm tired of this shit. I'm hungry. I'm about to eat. And he just starts eating the planet like right then and there. Thor's like, wait, wait, hold up, Galactus. We had a deal. I get the people off the planet first and then you eat. Like, that deal is done. Only reason I agreed to that shit because you didn't tell me where the planets were. This last planet, I don't have to follow you anymore. So I'm just going to eat and I don't really care what happens to these people. So Thor is just like, okay, fine. So be it. So Thor cocks back the hammer, gets the biggest lightning bolt he ever had in his life, shoots it at Galactus, and it barely tickles him. And like because he ate so many planets, he's like at the peak power that he's always been. Like, oh shit. So Thor starts, you know, revving up the hammer and shit like that, just turns to the people of, of the planets, like, I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah. Like it's gonna eat. 
and he flies off the planet right before the planet blows up and Galactus you know, eats everything I'm like oh that's fucked up so Thor is pissed he's like Galactus when this is done and we fight the Black Winter you and me gonna have a conversation about all the people you just killed and Galactus like yeah but until then we're gonna deal with this and they both look and it is the Black Winter coming directly at him it's here it's, it's on it's way about to fight them right now so that's yeah it's about to go down so yeah awesome book i don't know why comic cash shits on thor book this book is awesome oh uh, <laughs> yeah i mean I'm, I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 5 that's just me i mean, the book i've been waiting for when it comes out so yeah i don't i don't know so cool hmm. donny cates y'all huh? hey, i haven't like I've, yeah. I've, I've like pretty much dropped everything that he was doing like, like i haven't been read i haven't read venom in a while he stopped doing guardians so i haven't read that and then right i didn't bother picking up the thor I mean, I'm this not, thing, Dying Case cause... is telling one story. He's telling one story. Yeah, I'm not a Thor fan, so I just didn't like, eh, that's so. But maybe <laughs> I may, I don't know. I don't know, maybe. What I read is, is um, but I am a Thor fan. I grew up reading a Thor fan, but this shit is awesome. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm loving it. So it, It's All better right. than his Guardians run. I put it like that. All right, well, shit, what else did I do? Bloodshot. Oh, Bloodshot. What is it, <laughs> number seven? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Bloodshot number seven. Well, I don't, I, it's, um... It's basically a new story arc. So Bloodshot is basically he has this other uh, harbinger or what's she called? Psyot. There are Psyots, the, the the abilities, the like the X Men. You know they have abilities. He's got he rescued some chick with abilities, and they're like escaping. They're in like this invisible helicopter or whatever. They're being chased by the the Black Guard or the Black something shit i'm like i shouldn't be doing this book <laughs> basically they're being chased <laughs> by the, the, spy ne- <laughs> the spy the spy network there's a chase scene um and they they find this base you know where they're the where they were making other super soldiers and i gotta say that this shit looked pretty cool well i was like damn these super soldiers are like monsters they're like like resident evil mutant monsters and shit you know, like nemesis and fucking like liquors and shit like that. Tyrants. That's what it looked like. You know, they're all in like these, you know, uh, you know, big giant like fucking cryo tubes and shit. Um, and basically they get freed at the end. So that, that was just, this is like the first story or the first issue in this new story arc. So I was like, I was a little intrigued, you know, I don't know the details, you know, but, um, but I, I'll give it a four out of five. I, who knows? Maybe I'll check it out. I'll check out the next issue. I only read this because I thought you read it. No, you me, I just, I, I just asked it in random conversation. I didn't want you to read it. Oh yeah. I was like, well, I'll read it too. Just to, I, I should have put the disclaimer. I, I should have said I didn't read it. Oh yeah. I, 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 I feel bad that you wasted it. your time doing it. <laughs> it was like, it wasn't bad. You know, I mean, I've read, like I said, I've read some bloodshot and yeah, he is a total nineties hero. He's a dude with guns and Hey, I don't mind seeing a guy shoot motherfuckers and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I okay. thought it was all right. You know? And these are, got, they got big giant monsters in it too. So I was like, cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're, we're easy. We, we're not, we're not hard to say. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. This is monsters, guns. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to listen to get value. Cause one, I, I have to hear their bloodshot review. First off, I love Eric, but his taste in movies is terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious <laughs> to see what he has to say about the movie. I think he said he, he's already seen it three times when I saw his post. Yeah, he's yeah he's seen it multiple times now. I was listening to their, their other their other like uh, issue or issue uh, episode a couple weeks ago, and they're like, I was like, I'm, I was like, I, I, it's not it's not the question of whether or not I'm going to like it or not. It's the question of how many times I'm going to see it. <laughs> like, it should be a question whether or not you like it or not. It should be a question. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to yeah. ask that question. <laughs> like they're so hyped, they're so hyped for that movie. Right, so. and, and plus, I'm curious to see what they have to say about your Bloodshot book you just reviewed because you already know they're going to give it a seven point <laughs> five out of five. Oh yeah, I mean, I thought it was like I don't know what's going on, but I know I'm a familiar with the character. But yeah, it the Psyots, it is a shared universe. It did, you know, it referenced all this other shit that I don't know what that I don't know, you know, because I don't keep up with this this story i don't keep up with the with the with the valiant mythology you know so that that stuff was a little like i can't remember what that organization's called i can't remember the guy the 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 evil guy you know what his name was well in the movie they were rsg or rst or some shit 
So yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do. I don't I don't like to bask in my ignorance. So after I finish reading the Terrifics, which I'm almost done, I'm going to I saw on Comicsology Unlimited they have the original nineties bloodshot on there. So like twenty six. The original. The original. I'm gonna read it. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna go old school. I'm huh? gonna go old school. So I didn't even go old school. I went to I went to like the, the newer ones. I got to because if I just start with the new ones, it's gonna irritate me. So I gotta I gotta go I gotta start from the source. You know. You're one of those guys. I'm one of those yeah. guys. I'm <laughs> complete completionist. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I remember I did it with the Avengers. I read all of the Avengers books. Yeah, like you that. did, you fucking nut. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if we get quarantined, I might do that shit again. <laughs> X Men is right around the corner, so shit. So yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. By next week, this time we review again. I'll probably get a review of 90s Bloodshot. I probably will. Uh, all right. Still some Valiant fans. <laughs> or lose them. Get it. One or the other. <laughs> Fuck those guys. They don't right. know shit. <laughs> and we don't. We admit it. We don't know shit about Valiant. We don't know shit about Valiant. So if you listen to this just to hear what we have to say, like if you want to get some deep cut references about yeah. where Bloodshot came from, we don't know. Yeah. I'm and really not we a don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not posing either. I'm not jumping on a bandwagon or nothing. Right. I, I didn't want to like, wiki this shit. I didn't want to, yeah. you know, I don't give a fuck. It's just like, and, and you know yeah. what? And that's kind of the fun of it because I wanted to go in to watch this movie as a movie. You know, okay. I wasn't looking for yeah. this that did it check all the boxes they're supposed to have in all the bang books. No, like every other fan that don't understand this shit, like I should rate this as a movie. That's all. So yeah. all the other shit should matter. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There we go. Have we talked enough about Bloodshot? I think we have. This is the most Valiant yeah. episode we've done. I've been dreading this episode. I like I, More than the coronavirus, I didn't want to talk about Valiant. <laughs> so, yeah. So, if you listen this long, definitely like, share, and subscribe. We have our other podcast. We have our sister podcast, Geek Sav. Uh, we also have Comic Cast. Like I said, listen to them, listen to the books that they have, watch some shit on Donnie Cates. No, they need, I bet you didn't even read it. That's how bad it's gotten. <laughs> and uh, we also have Get Valiant, which we've been promoting. We've been promoting the hell out of Get Valiant. We promote Get Valiant more than Get Valiant is promoting Get Valiant. So go yeah. listen to them. See what they have to say about Bloodshot. Let's see, I'm really wanting to see how they dig into this movie and see what they think about it. I'm curious. Uh, we also have uh, This Geeks and Comics. We have Instruments of Destruction. Um, d- 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 uh, Wrestling Council? Nah, Wrestling Council. So never mind. Um, yeah, and next week I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. If if we're still here, if the apocalypse hasn't hit yet, we'll come with another show. We'll find something to talk about. There's always something. Because <laughs> the thing is, yeah, every movie theater will be canceled. Guess what hasn't been canceled? Comics. Yeah, they're gonna crank go. these motherfuckers out on time. <laughs> or I'll get, or we'll, I'll get you to watch Candyman. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk we'll talk offline <laughs> until then this is Leroy this is Eli we'll talk to you guys next week same bullet time same bullet channel <laughs>